Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for joining us again for another session here in the Master Spotlight series that we have going on. My name is Josh. I'm representing GMAT Club. And for this session, we have Carnegie Mellon's Tepper School of Business. Um, they'll be posting links in the live chat. Make sure you check those out. There will also be links posted by GMAT Club for registering for the giveaway that's done at the end of the session. And so, Mike, I'm going to hand it over to you. I'm going to let you introduce yourself and your team, jump right into your presentation, and I'll come back on for the Q&A at the end. Thank you, Josh. Welcome to the Masters of Science and Business Analytics webinar here through the Tepper School of Business at Carnegie Mellon University. My name is Mike Roth. I am the admissions counselor here specifically with the MSBA program. Also joining us is the MSBA program head, Dr. Alan Montgomery. Without further ado, we'll turn it over to Alan. Thanks, Mike. Uh, just to give you a brief background of myself, uh, I am the program head. Uh, I am also a faculty and instructor in the program. Uh, my area of um, interest is in marketing, uh, especially market analytics, where you take big data sets, uh, you um, solve marketing problems using machine learning, data mining, and um, analytic methods. Uh, next slide. Uh, just to tell you a little more about the Tepper School, uh, we're very proud to have pioneered the uh, discipline of management science. Uh, so this goes back to the 50s and the founding of the school. Uh, so if you uh, look at the history of the Tepper School at the time, the Graduate School of Industrial Administration, uh, you'll see that there are a lot of firsts. Uh, we were uh, uh, on campus, the place that the School of Computer Science spun off from, and the School of Public Policy. Uh, so I think uh, one of the themes that you'll find at the Tepper School is that we really embrace uh, cross-disciplinary work. Uh, we are a top-rate graduate program. Uh, if you take a look at the right, you'll see uh, some of the uh, rankings. Uh, the the uh, top one, the online MBA, can be updated to uh, number one there. But uh, overall, um, I think this is a great program. Uh, there are a lot of rigorous standards as well as on-campus programs that you get to enjoy. Next. Uh, so the place to start is what exactly is an MSBA? Uh, well, obviously you're trying to gain expertise in business analytics. Uh, business analytics is a combination of analytic skills. But it doesn't stop there. If you were just interested in the analytic skills, you would just focus on a, a, a degree in data science or machine learning. Uh, there's the business part, which means that you also have to think about business knowledge. But again, it doesn't stop there. You've got to combine the analytic skills, the business knowledge, and then ultimately it's trying to communicate or persuade individuals. So business is all about making decisions. Uh, so I see the business analytics program is uh, one that tries to blend these three skills, uh, analytics, business knowledge, as well as persuasion and communication. Uh, it's meant for those that are interested in developing their career in business analytics. Uh, our program is actually fairly diverse. Some people are coming fresh out of undergraduate and other uh, individuals have um, extensive business experience, more than 10 years. Uh, so we get a wide gamut of people that are just starting out and want to work in an analytics position or people that are managing a team of analytics professionals who are trying to lead their business in uh, embracing analytic thinking. Next slide. Uh, this is a snapshot of the curriculum. Uh, so as you take a look, you realize that it's going over the course of um, not quite two years, it's 18 months. Uh, we start in uh, uh, fall. Uh, the semesters at Carnegie Mellon are broken up into minis, so the first half and the second half. Uh, you'll notice that the curriculum is color-coded. Uh, there is uh, a blue square and a red square. The blue square is talking about um, analytic component. Uh, so it's meant to try to uh, give you in-depth knowledge about uh, business analytics. The red squares are meant to try to convey more about uh, the applications. Uh, it's not always true, uh, but I, I think for the most part, if you take a look, you'll see that there's going to be um, exposure to marketing. 
uh, to finance, uh, supply chain analytics. Uh, you're going to learn fundamental techniques uh, about statistical analysis, uh, programming in R and Python. Optimization is an important strength of the school and also in the program, uh, as well as trying to um, communicate value through integrative analytics and managing teams and organizations. Uh, you'll notice also that uh, the program ends with a capstone experience. So this is an integrative experience where you get to work with a um, sponsor on trying to solve their problem using business analytics. Next slide. Uh, so just to try to help orient, uh, it's not a pure online program. It's uh, meant to be a hybrid program. Uh, that means that there are times that you actually come to campus. Uh, there's base camp, there's immersion weekend, and then there's the capstone presentations. Unfortunately, with COVID in the last year, many of these have had to go online, uh, but uh, that's not the desired aspect. We really do want to have some interaction uh, between you and the faculty, as well as you with your peers. Uh, one of the best experiences is learning and learning in a group of people, and oftentimes you'll learn a lot from your peers. Uh, the program starts with base camp. Uh, so this is meant to set the stage for understanding what the program is going to be, talking about communication, collaborative learning, and just understanding uh, what's going to drive success in the program. There is an analytics immersion weekend, gives you a chance to come to campus. Oftentimes we'll set up uh, a, a visit with a local business. In this case, a local business is Google. Uh, it provides students with a, an immersive experience in trying to understand what's going on, as well as to try to network uh, with each other, as well as uh, the sponsors or uh, um, uh, businesses that are involved. And then the last part of the program is the capstone presentations. So you'll work with a company on a project throughout the fall semester. Uh, I'm sorry, the spring semester, and this will be uh, a semester long experience. Uh, you'll start with defining the problem. Uh, you'll uh, try to understand what exactly is going to find success. Then you start thinking about the analytics that can be brought in as well as the data that's going to be support that. Uh, it's not abstract. Our problems tend to be concrete. Uh, oftentimes this is a problem about um, uh, a spending optimization, or it could be something about a supply chain optimization problem, or it could be about a marketing uh, uh, optimization problem. How do we prevent churn? Uh, so right now we have a project with an online uh, video and the company is interested in trying to uh, decrease the churn of its customer base. So how does it do that? What kind of engagement? How to use uh, analytics to try to figure out who to target and who to understand uh, what incentives will work and why. Uh, other times the projects uh, are um, you know, uh, venture off a little more in some creativity. Uh, we have another project uh, with a startup company. Uh, so the, the problems tend to be different with startup companies. Uh, it, it, it's not a big organization. It's a small organization and oftentimes um, very much oriented towards monetization. Uh, so um, I, I think there is um, a, a great curriculum for you uh, to really learn and not just learn online, but also to learn on campus and learn in a peer context. Next slide. Uh, just to give you a brief glance of what our faculty looks like, uh, each course is taught by uh, a regular faculty member. Uh, so many of these are uh, distinguished researchers in the area. Uh, so we have um, uh, faculty from all of the areas, including finance and business technologies, uh, communications, operations, research. Uh, we also have um, economics, uh, organizational behavior. We have um, faculty from uh, 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 manufacturing and also myself in marketing. Uh, so I think it's an excellent set of uh, colleagues and they really do represent uh, a cutting edge, not just in education, but in research of uh, business analytics. 
I, I should also point out uh, several of these faculty also hold appointments uh, with uh, the School of Computer Science. Uh, myself, I have a courtesy appointment in machine learning, uh, as well as uh, a couple of the other faculty. So it really is meant to try to draw on expertise that we have, uh, not trying to uh, borrow or substitute uh, a watered down version. Uh, next slide. Uh, so uh, with this, uh, I can talk a little about uh, the online uh, course experience. Uh, so the courses are a blend of synchronous and asynchronous components. Uh, so the asynchronous component oftentimes are going to be recorded content, uh, articles that you read, exercise that you're working on. Sometimes those exercises will be done in groups of individuals. Uh, asynchronous is just meant to convey the fact that uh, you get to schedule uh, when that's going to happen. Uh, there's a live synchronous component. Uh, so there's one regularly scheduled meeting each week. Uh, usually this is going to be 75 minutes. It'll be in an evening. Uh, it's meant to be conducive for people that are working. Uh, so um, after dinner, you come home, you have a chance to uh, uh, join in on class. Uh, it's uh, uh, hopefully going to accommodate uh, uh, schedules that go all the way from the East Coast to the West Coast. Uh, the classes are seven weeks in length and we keep with this format throughout those seven weeks. Uh, on the left you see um, Canvas and Zoom. Uh, these are some of the tools that we use in the program. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. All right, I'll take it over from here, Alan. Thank you. So our online MSBA students are fully resourced by the Master Career Center. What the Master Career Center is going to do is it's going to give you that one-on-one -on -one career counseling based on your interests, your skills, the experience that you have, industries that you're looking to target. Uh, they're also going to help you with mock interviews, build you a resume book, and that's where you're going to have the exposure to extensive corporate recruiting and job offer counseling. across. Our MSBA program, 90% of our graduates did earn a promotion within the first 30 days or did find a new position. We also saw a 21% salary increase across the entire cohort. We work with over 500 recruiting partners, uh, such as Deloitte, PwC, Amazon. And also after you do graduate from the MS with the MSBA, you will have access to our large international alumni network. Next slide, please. Admission requirements. So it is a very holistic approach as far as what the admission committee is looking for, but there are certain prerequisites as far as what we look for when it comes to a prospective student. Uh, one of them being you already do possess a four-year undergraduate degree or equivalent from an accredited institution. And we also look for key competencies in areas such as calculus, linear algebra, statistics, um, and also basic computer programming in any modern language. R, Python, SQL, uh, C++, just to name a few. Next slide. As far as the application overview, you'll go ahead and complete the online application form. You'll submit all your unofficial transcripts of your academic work. Um, you'll go ahead and submit your official GMAT or GRE scores, or if you're looking for a waiver, you'll go ahead and indicate through the application that you are, you are looking for the waiver. Uh, well, you'll also go ahead and, and put your resume, no more than two pages, the essay, two professional letters of recommendation. If your primary language of instruction was in a language other than English, um, you would be required to do a, uh, submit a TOEFL or an IDLE score or a Duolingo score. There will be an interview and also the $125 application fee. Um, there is a fee waiver if you are able to either connect with me um, or if you attended this event. Next slide. Awesome. Thank you, fellas, for sharing about the MSBA program. Um, it, it's uniquely positioned, it seems, um, you know, with COVID having come onto the scene in the 2019 and the 2020. Um, 
uh, everything had moved online. And so with this programming, this program having been primarily online as it is, um, I'd imagine that Tepper was in a great position for, for the rest of the programs as well, having that experience. Um, we'll go right into some questions here. So could you tell us a little bit about what makes Tepper unique when compared to other top business schools? Uh, sure. Uh, so uh, as I expressed before, I. Uh, Tepper uh, takes a, um, a, a rigorous analytic approach, uh, not just in this program, mm -hmm. but a, a across all the programs that we offer. Uh, we see that we're uniquely positioned at that intersection between <coughs> business and technology. Uh, so it wasn't a shift for us to pick up on analytics. Analytics is something that has always been in the DNA of the school. Uh, and uh, you'll see that it permeates throughout. Uh, when you talk to people in um, uh, organizational behavior, uh, there's a, a course in people analytics. Uh, so uh, th this is not just um, uh, an area that uh, gets marginalized. Ah, we don't need analytics. Analytics comes in a lot of different places. As I said, uh, marketing, uh, manufacturing, uh, organizational uh, uh, operations research, all of these are areas where um, analytics comes into play. I, I would say some of the other things that make Tepper unique is that we're a smaller school. Uh, so uh, we're not a, a, a school with uh, thousands of people there. Uh, we're talking about hundreds uh, of students. Uh, and as a, con uh, as a consequence, uh, there's a, a more intimacy uh, between faculty and students. There's uh, more connections. So I think that's helpful. I, we also have a lot of um, integration uh, uh, with other units on campus. Uh, so it's not business isolated. Uh, Carnegie Mellon also is relatively small compared to uh, other universities. And uh, that really fosters interaction with uh, other areas. Uh, in, in the analytics context, oftentimes uh, machine learning would one that comes up or computer science or AI or statistics. Uh, but uh, I think these are some of the things that make Tepper unique uh, and, and make it one of the top uh, business schools uh, worldwide. Absolutely. Um, and so <clears throat> with COVID, you know, being throughout the world, have you seen any increase um, in the applications for this upcoming year? Do you anticipate any changes to the applicant pool? Well, I always hope that we're going to get a, an excellent mm -hmm. applicant pool. Uh, so I encourage everyone to apply. Uh, the, there are a lot of um, elements that go into your decision about whether to apply. Uh, and as um, uh, Josh mentioned, uh, the perm's an online one. Uh, it, it has been. So I don't think it's been as affected by COVID. Uh, when COVID came around, it was um, easy enough mm -hmm. for us to try to adapt. Uh, other programs, uh, you know, they're on campus. Obviously, they've really had to deal with uh, big changes. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in terms of applications, uh, our program's been around for the last few years. I expect that will continue to grow. Uh, I look forward to um, a, a diverse set of applicants. Uh, so don't rule yourself out because uh, sometimes uh, engineers have uh, this um, uh, high... Uh, um, a, a degree of association for Carnegie Mellon, but uh, uh, wherever uh, your background comes from, whether it's economics or whether it's another business program, uh, whether you're coming from an area outside like engineering or computer science, uh, we're really looking for a diverse uh, background. Uh, there are some core components that we're looking for, but uh, I'm not anticipating uh, dramatic changes in the applicant pool as a consequence. Awesome. Um, let me take a look here. So <clears throat> when um, completing the application, how far back can an individual go uh, to secure a recommendation? Um, yeah, how far back can they go where a candidate's unable to secure a recommendation from their most recent supervisor? Uh, 
I, I, I know that there are many reasons that uh, you might be uncomfortable <laughs> with uh, uh, your current boss giving a recommendation. So if you want to go back a year or two, uh, or even if you want to go back to your undergraduate days uh, and you have someone that knows you well and can speak about your experience and uh, why they think you would be um, a, a great candidate for the program, uh, go for it. There, there's no cutoff. Uh, what I, I would encourage you to do is make sure that uh, the person knows uh, who you are and the kind of work that you do. Uh, it's much better to have a thoughtful letter uh, from uh, someone that you know well, even if it's a, a few years old, than to have um, a very cursory letter from someone that, uh, I don't know, maybe you've only been in the position for a month or two and that they just don't know you well. So what we're looking for is um, uh, help in understanding who you are and uh, what, what your strengths are. Uh, so I, I, I think this is important for us because uh, uh, we're, we're not just looking narrowly at one skill set. It's not just academic performance. Uh, it's uh, trying to make sure that uh, <laughs> you will embrace analytics uh, and that wow. you really desire this in your career. Uh, so that this is important to us uh, to um, aid you and uh, we're making sure that there's going to be a, a good connection between uh, the, the students in the program. Absolutely. Staying kind of on the, the application side of things, how can a, a candidate address a weakness in their application? Uh, good. I, I think we all have weaknesses. Uh, so uh, you don't need to hide it. Um, oftentimes, uh, you know, we'll be able to see that uh, you failed a course in your transcripts. Uh, mm -hmm. It's always uh, a question of why. Uh, uh, so when the admissions committee takes a look at a candidate, you know, we're not trying to look at, uh, uh, you know, strange, unusual things and say, okay, as a consequence, we just can't admit you. Uh, what is good is when you're writing your letter uh, that you address some of the weaknesses. Uh, obviously, you're going to talk about your strengths, but uh, if you had um, a reason, uh, I don't know, maybe there was an illness, uh, or maybe it was early on and you just didn't figure out what you wanted to do in that first year of uh, university life was just overwhelming to you. Uh, it's okay uh, to acknowledge those weaknesses and make sure that we understand. Uh, and uh, the, the other thing that's helpful is um, help us understand why you think you've overcome that weakness or whether that weakness is still there. Absolutely. Um, and so how can an applicant, you know, other than addressing any weaknesses, how can they help themselves stand out um, aside from just having a high GMAT or GRE score? Uh, so uh, <coughs> a lot of these things are years in the making, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what, what's a standout applicant? Someone that has a great undergraduate and academic career, someone that's had exceptional GMAT, someone that uh, has uh, done wonderful in their career so far. Uh, but uh, what we're also trying to do is help you uh, to grow. Uh, so what I think is important is for you to communicate why you're really interested in analytics and how it fits in with what you want to do and what you want to learn and uh, what you want to do in life. Uh, so I, I, I think to um, uh, help uh, stand out, uh, communicate uh, those elements uh, about uh, you individually uh, that uh, may not always come out or maybe they don't come out as clearly. Uh, may maybe there are elements in the record that you want to point out and say, ah, here's a, a great example of where I've really succeeded. So we, we, we care about those things. Absolutely. Yeah, I've often heard um, um, admissions teams say, you know, that you can't really go back and change your undergraduate GPA. That That's something that's out of your control. But the rest of the application and, and your GMAT GRE, that's things that are in your control. Those are things that can um, you can use to offset um, any deficiencies that you had in your undergrad. And so um, that's always been uh, something that has stuck with me as well. And so <clears throat> um, is it, you know, it's obviously geared towards individuals of all all ranges from new undergrad graduates to individuals who've been in their career for five, 10 years. 
is it necessary to have work experience in more than one company to get an admin to the program? Um, if someone just has a little bit of work experience, does that have an impact on their application? Uh, I would <coughs> say that um, it's not a requirement. Uh, so our expectation is not that you have to have um, you know, four or five years as an MBA program would have. And again, MBAs are uh, exceptions as well. You can have students that come directly from an undergraduate uh, or students that are coming from other graduate programs. Uh, so in this particular program, um, there are other things that might compensate for work experience or maybe it goes the other way around. Uh, so maybe you've had a degree uh, in an analytic area, uh, but you just don't know business well. And that might be one of the reasons that you want to go into this program. Uh, so it's possible that you can have very limited experience or you could have experience in work that's not directly in the kind of thing that you want to do. Uh, uh, maybe you're working in the service industry and you want to switch over and uh, work in analytics. Uh, so that, that's fine. There are other people where it works the other way. They don't have an analytic background in an undergraduate program, uh, but uh, over the last few years, they've learned a lot of the skills that they need, uh, but they just don't have sort of that systematic experience. Uh, so I, I think it can go both ways. Sometimes your work experience helps you uh, in the admissions process. Uh, in other times, mm -hmm. uh, you lack work experience, uh, but that doesn't preclude you just means that we have to focus on some of the other aspects of the, your application. Absolutely. And, and you had mentioned, um, you know, students who may be in the service industry want to transition over into um, an analytical role. And this question can be kind of geared towards not just international students, but also um, domestic students. But how is the experience for students with recruiting so far and how does the career service team help support them, um, especially during COVID times? I, since many of the students already have jobs, I, sometimes mm -hmm. uh, the career <laughs> service team is less important to students mm -hmm. uh, because they expect that they're gonna be able to move up uh, within their own organization. Uh, but that mm -hmm. being said, uh, the university has an extensive career service team. Uh, they will help you in uh, writing and evaluating your resume. They will help uh, uh, in the uh, interviewing process to try to um, help you improve uh, your skills. Uh, there's the Accelerate program that we're working with uh, about leadership. And then uh, uh, finally, uh, there's an extensive set of um, uh, uh, recruiters that are coming to campus uh, or in this case, uh, have online uh, postings <laughs> that uh, we'll, we'll share with our students. Uh, so there's also, how's the experience of international students? So I think this would be true for all students. International students um, have a, a disadvantage because uh, the, the program uh, is in the evenings, Eastern time. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you're in China, then uh, take 12 or 13 hours or anywhere in Asia or India or Africa, uh, Europe. I, 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 our students have come from all over. I, I, I'd say that um, you know if you have uh, a, a specific international experience that you're looking for, uh, if you're looking for a job in South Africa, uh, our career service team may not be as helpful as if you're looking right. for a job in a, a, a a major financial um, institution in the U.S. So uh, ju just understand will be helpful, but uh, we, we can't make promises uh, about uh, okay. career advancement. I, I would say that uh, a very large percentage of uh, our students have experienced uh, promotion uh, mm -hmm. after graduation. So yeah, I, 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 I'm thinking that's a causal effect here. Uh, uh -huh. but. I, I, yeah. I, uh, I, I think it's just demonstrating that uh, uh, there's value in the program. Absolutely. Um, and so what is the typical class like? Um, you know, you have, it's primarily online with, the, with some campus experiences, but 
What could a student expect their typical week to look like in terms of a course? In you know, are there recorded lectures, homework assignments, group projects, live, live class? What is that? What does that structure really look like for them? Well, I can tell you that all the courses have a common structure in the sense that they meet once per week. So there is 75, mm -hmm. 75 minutes that each course will meet per week for seven weeks. Uh, all the courses follow the same calendar, so they're always going to be seven weeks. Uh, beyond that, um, every course runs a bit differently, and it's a reflection of the content uh, that you're working in, uh, as well as the instructor. So I can tell you how I run my course. Yeah. Uh, when we're talking about marketing analytics, um, each week I, um, I will start out with a marketing problem. I'll introduce a data set and we'll talk about uh, compatible technique. Uh, oftentimes it's a technique that the students have learned in another uh, course in the program. Mm -hmm. And then we'll think about how do you blend those three things together. Uh, that'll be the asynchronous component. And then the synchronous component will be um, come back and let's take a look at student solutions. So I'll ask the teams to present. Uh, the, the peers will evaluate, give some suggestions. Uh, we'll, we'll think about uh, what are the common problems. Uh, we'll discuss those in the asynchronous section. And uh, we'll try to think about not just the strengths, but some of the limitations and the weaknesses of the methods. Uh, so for me, that's what uh, uh, my seven weeks looks like. Uh, we'll do that you know, roughly seven times. Uh, there are other um, courses that focus a lot on uh, group teamwork. Uh, uh, there, there are other courses that are focused more on method. Uh, so if it's machine learning, uh, you know, maybe it's important to um, have a lot of hands-on Python scripting. Uh, so that's the way Zach will teach his class. Uh, others uh, might uh, go heavy into visualization and communication. Uh, so uh, there's variety, and I think that's desirable from a student standpoint. The one consistent experience is for seven weeks, uh, for 75 yeah. minutes each week. Uh, you, you know that you'll have that synchronous component that uh, you, you want to be there for. Absolutely. So it seems like Tepper really it puts an emphasis on um, collaboration and um, peer learning as well. Um, and so what um, how does Tepper approach diversity? Um, essentially, how does how does Tepper approach the topic of diversity and what has been done to help ensure minority populations are supported? Um, throughout the school? Uh, so diversity has been uh, an important topic. <laughs> uh, I, I think uh, uh, we as a university um, uh, mm -hmm. hold to values that say diversity is important. Uh, we're not going to judge people based upon uh, race, ethnicity, uh, religion, and uh, we hold true to that uh, during you know, the admissions uh, process and uh, also afterwards. Uh, but at the same time, uh, if you have uh, underrepresented groups that um, are left out, uh, you know, definitely we want to encourage them uh, to be part and to uh, uh, be welcomed in the program. Uh, in the last year, uh, the university has stepped up and they've created uh, initiatives uh, in terms of encouraging underrepresented minorities to apply. Uh, so for uh, th those minority populations out there, uh, by all means, uh, uh, please uh, take the first step. And uh, the, the, uh, the, the first step is that application process. Uh, so don't, don't be scared away uh, if you don't see someone that looks like you in the program. Uh, because we value and want that diversity. Awesome. Um, this is a question uh, that came through the, the live chat. Do, do the technically focused positions end up leading to man managerial positions in the future? I, I would say in business right now, um, companies want to embrace uh, a data-driven business model. Uh, for businesses to be able to do that, they're having to grapple with managers that have not had that analytics training. 
And the frustration, I think, for many businesses that uh, since the managers don't have the analytics training, they don't know how to integrate it in. Uh, so if you're a technical focused position, does that mean that you're going to be relegated to being an analyst for the rest of your career? And I'd say no. Uh, I, I think you're going to start out uh, in low level positions and then you'll move up through the organization. But what I see right now, and I think in the next 10 to 20 years, is a transformation in business management where all of a sudden having those technical skills is going to be a great offsetting characteristic. And uh, I, I think it's actually going to be really important. If you want to be able to lead your company in, into uh, in analytics orientation and to embrace data, uh, you're, you're going to need to understand it. Uh, doesn't mean that you need to know everything about it, but you yeah. definitely need to know how analytics is going to integrate into business. So to me, that's what the program is about. It's not meant to uh, just be training people for their first job or two. It's uh, for them to think about how analytics is going to um, integrate into uh, the business overall. So again, there's technical skills that we emphasize. Uh, but there's also thinking about the managerial problems and how you make decisions. And I think those will last uh, throughout your career. Uh, I've had uh, alumni uh, from our master's program uh, that come back 40 or 50 years later. And, you know, they're still talking about how important uh, the analytic skills were that they learned uh, and, and how that really uh, um, uh, was something that they leveraged throughout their career and uh, continue to, to foster and develop. Awesome. Um, this is kind of a more broad question, but what uh, what is the Tepper community like as a whole? Um, you know, it, it's obviously Tepper and, and Carnegie Mellon in general is known for their analytics and, and Tepper is known for that analytical approach to business education. Um, what what could one expect from their cohort or, or their classmates in terms of um, compatibility? Um, is there opportunities for them to network with one another? Um, what uh, what does it look like once you're in the program and going through it with everybody else? Hi. Sure. Uh, so as um, uh, business has become collaborative, and uh, the, the reason that collaboration is important in an analytics world uh, is that uh, it, it's rare that one person will have all the analytics skills that are necessary. It is possible that you are a machine learning expert. You also have extensive experience about your fundamental area, say marketing in my case. Mm -hmm. And you're also a great programmer and you um, can manage data at scale. Uh, and not only that, but you can also um, persuade uh, anybody to uh, adopt your analytics approach. Uh, more likely, uh, each one of those skills is going to reside in a different person. So the, the reason that collaboration is going to be important is that you've got to depend upon your peers, your teammates. Uh, so uh, part of the program is uh, getting that across and saying that uh, we want you to interact with your peers. So don't expect that you're going to log on once a week and see a little picture of a peer and that's your only interaction with them. Expect mm -hmm. that you're going to spend some time with your peers outside of the program or outside of that um, synchronous component of the program mm -hmm. uh, and that you're going to be prepared to uh, work with them. Uh, that the problems vary a lot. Sometimes it will be a programming problem. Other times it will be a persuasion and presentation. And other mm -hmm. times it will be uh, trying to draw on business knowledge that you may not have. So maybe we're talking about supply chain analytics and you don't know anything about supply chain no. analytics, but chances are there's someone in the team that has some experience with that. Absolutely. Now, do you feel, and from your experience, do you, for an individual who is, looking to move into a technical position um, outside of the company they're already with. Do you feel that their their cohort is their best um, resource for being able to do that? Uh, most jobs are found still <laughs> through social connections. Mm -hmm. uh, 
so I would say your peer network will be of importance and value. Uh, so I think your peers uh, will be helpful. Uh, again, I, I can't promise that your peers are going to lead to your next job. Uh, right. It's a lot easier to find a new job when you already have one than to uh, be looking <laughs> for one. So I, I think the experience that I've heard is that, uh, yes, peers uh, and peers in the program are helpful. Uh, I don't know that uh, they're the determining factor in your career. I think for most people, they have an idea of where they want to go and what they want to do. Uh, sometimes your peers are also your competitors, right? Uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, I, I want this job, you want this job at the same time. Yeah. Uh, but it's a very big business world. There are a lot of opportunities. And I, I think mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, uh, it's going to be a very collaborative experience and that you're going to find that the connections that you make are going to be helpful as you're looking for a job in the future. Absolutely. Um, what um, what piece of advice would you give someone who is applying to the program? Is there anything in specific that the admissions committee believes is most important um, or not even most important, but is there anything that just kind of helps a, a student stand out? Oh, well, the, the first thing to do to apply next fall is uh, start the process, right? So mm -hmm. you'll, you'll talk with Mike, you'll talk with me. And uh, <laughs> the, the important thing is just provide all the materials that people are, that the admissions is asking for. So mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you provide your transcripts. And uh, if you have a GRE or GMAT score, provide them. Uh, there is a waiver uh, uh, this year. Uh, there are uh, uh, circumstances, uh, considerations that uh, come into play about uh, waiver. Uh, I, I'd say the, the one thing that some people miss out on is uh, when they're writing their statement, you know, this is a chance for you to communicate why you actually want to do this program. And we're looking for people that... Um, uh, are excited about learning business analytics and that this is going to be part of what they want to do in their career. So if you're coming from an analytics position right now and uh, you know, you're thinking about advancement, it's obvious. Uh, but if you're coming from outside and saying, okay, I, I have an engineering background and I, I want to make this shift, uh, it's very important for you to uh, talk about why you want to do that and uh, why you, you think uh, uh, this is going to fit well with what you want to learn. We're looking mm -hmm. for consistency. You know, it's right. not just looking to admit as many people as possible. We really care right. about who's going to come in the program and that uh, this is going to be a good experience uh, and it's going to be a valuable experience. Uh, it, it's expensive. <laughs> uh, and it's something that uh, as you progress, we want to make sure that it's valuable to you. Absolutely. Now, uh, last question here. Um, obviously, um, individuals who have a background in economics, mathematics, statistics, um, engineering, are they have that quantitative component um, in an educational standpoint. How about applicants that are coming from um, you know, another STEM field such as biology or an individual who may be looking at moving into analytics and they're um, from the humanities or, or that type of area. Is there anything that they can do um, aside from the GMAT to kind of help um, show their dedication to the field? Uh, so GMAT gives an <laughs> indication of mathematical aptitude. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not necessarily the best indicator of the mathematical skills that you're going to use in the program. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are going to use some calculus. We are going to use some linear algebra. Uh, mm -hmm. So th those are going to be important. We are going to work with probability. Um, I, I think it might be difficult for people that have a pure humanities background uh, mm -hmm. to succeed and enter in our program. Uh, because we are looking for some prerequisites. Um, it, it would be difficult if we have someone that knows nothing about probability and uh, they're entering in with someone that has extensive knowledge. So uh, right. what we're trying to do is level set to make sure that uh, there's sort of a minimum. So if you're coming yep. from a background that's not analytic, uh, 
one thing you can do is um, take other courses uh, just independently on the prerequisites that you're going to need. Uh, mm -hmm. So in the U.S. system, just about everybody has had an introductory course in statistics and a mm -hmm. uh, introductory sequence in calculus. Mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't, you know, my guess is that you figure out a way to avoid it, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you, you probably don't <laughs> want the business analytics uh, experience. Uh, but if you um, uh, want to try to improve uh, uh, your background, I, I would say look for um, some mm -hmm. of the other online uh, university courses that you can take, uh, other readings that you can do, things that really enhance uh, your uh, you know, background knowledge about math and programming. Uh, Th those will definitely make the uh, experience go much better in the program. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, for those that lack that background as an undergraduate, it it's really important for you to pick up uh, some of those skills. Uh, and again, mm -hmm. it's not that you you've got to have years of programming experience. Uh, a semester course in programming, a semester course in linear algebra uh, should be sufficient uh, for what we're looking for in the program. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, it looks like we have hit our time. Uh, Mike, Alan, Ben, um, I want to thank you all for taking time out of your day to, to come and share about the Masters in Business Analytics there at the Tepper School. Um, everybody else watching, make sure that you check out the links that were put in the chat regarding the registering for the giveaways. Um, we do have one more session coming up in about 15 minutes and it is the student panel. So make sure that you check into that as well because you're gonna get an inside look at the life of master's students and, and their perception of their programs and um, just kind of how it is to be a master's student. And so with that being said, um, I'm done here. Mike, Allen, Ben, have a good rest of your day and we'll catch you later. Thanks, Thanks Josh. Thanks, Alan.